Hello everyone and welcome to Purposefully Design. This is Angela and I'm back with another word and but I want to start off with this song that God had given me. Um, I'm trying to get the beat to it. Um, it kind of went, acknowledge who God is, knowledge, knowledge who God is, acknowledge who God is, knowledge, knowledge who God is, acknowledge who God is, knowledge, knowledge who God is. And then um, this song doesn't belong to me, but there's a song that says, you are Alpha and Omega. We worship you, our Lord. You are worthy to be praised. Then there's Hosanna. Blessed be the rock. Blessed be the rock of my salvation. Hosanna. Blessed be the rock. Blessed be the rock of my salvation. Oh, come magnify the Lord. For He is worthy to be praised. Oh, come magnify the Lord. For He is worthy to be praised. Oh, Hosanna, blessed be the rock, blessed be the rock of my salvation, Hosanna, blessed be the rock, blessed be the rock of my salvation. Acknowledge who God is, knowledge, knowledge who God is, acknowledge who God is, knowledge, knowledge who God is, acknowledge who God is, knowledge, knowledge who God is, acknowledge, knowledge who God is. And so today, that's what we're going to be talking about is acknowledging God. You know, um, it's really that time to really acknowledge Him. And I believe that's what He's doing in this hour. He's opened up our eyes to see. He's opened up ears to hear. And He's opened up every heart to be receptive to His will and to His way. You know, and I, God, I just thank you for it. I thank you, Lord God, for what you're doing in this hour. I thank you for your people, Lord God. I just pray that you will open up their ears continuously and that you'll open up our eyes to see more and open up our heart even more to be receptive in the mighty name of Jesus and the things that you're trying to teach us and allow us to be aware of, Lord God. We thank you for your knowledge, your wisdom, and your understanding even now, Father. Just any barrier, Lord God, I just pray that you will cut off every barrier. Lord God, anything that would not allow this word to go forth, I pray that it will go forth in the mighty name of Jesus and that they will receive your word, Lord God, in Jesus' name, Lord God, bring forth your awareness, Lord God, bring forth your light even now as we reverence you, Lord God, and continue to lift you up and acknowledge who you are, Lord God. Continue to give us that understanding that we need, the discernment that we need, everything that you call us to be, allow us to be here in this new year, 2023. We thank you, Lord God, for provision. We thank you for um, revelation and understanding and acknowledgement as to who you are, even to see you even more clearer. In the mighty name of Jesus, God, we give you honor, we give you praise, and all glory belongs to you. In Jesus' name, thank God and amen. You know, sometimes I don't know when it's going to break out 
<laughs> to prayer. I just want to acknowledge who God is and uh, it is what it is, y'all. I just roll with the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, as He um, allows me to see, as He, you know, directs me. That's how I go, you know. And so, if you've been hanging with me for a while, you know how it is, okay? So, sorry, but not sorry, because I have to do it His way, not mine. But anyway, acknowledging who God is, and that's what... I believe he's doing right now not only just is he um, allowing us to see who he is but he's showing us who he ain't okay he's showing us who he's not he's showing us the difference of spirits you know what I'm saying it's discerning of spirits is so important so Anyways, we're going to go into Proverbs 3 and 5 right now. It says, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. Then it says in 7, be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. And so it kind of goes into what I was saying. He's also revealing who he's not as well as who he is. And the more we come into that understanding as to who God is, we'll know who he ain't. You know what I mean? Who he's not. Okay. And so um, we have to acknowledge the fact that the word says here. To lean not into our own understanding, but to trust the Lord with all of our hearts. You know, a lot of times we tend to get caught up in our own ways and our own emotions. And we lean to our own understanding, trying to figure this thing out for ourselves. And this is not what... This is not the way of the Lord. This is not the way that he wants us to go. He wants us to totally depend on him, his ways, his understanding, his knowledge, because his ways are higher than ours. You know, his thoughts are higher than ours, you know. And so we have to acknowledge him in all of our ways. And and if we learn to do that, guess what? The word says He shall and he shall direct our paths. So in the way that we should go and it said paths with the S. So that means in every aspect of our lives, we have to learn to acknowledge God in every way. All is everything. You know, a lot of us want to put a cap on God. We want to say, oh, he's concerned with this, but he ain't concerned about that. You know, why are you putting that thing on God? That's he ain't, he don't, He's not worried about that. Why? It says here, in all thy ways, acknowledge him. If you reverence God in every aspect of your life and not put him in a box and say, oh, he's limited to this. He's limited to that. You know what I'm saying? And really open up and see God everywhere in everything and in everybody. Guess what? He's able then to direct us in the way that we should go. You know, in the word, at home, with our children, with our finances, in our relationships. You know, it's he he is the one who holds the family together. OK, acknowledge him, acknowledge his presence. You know, in all of our ways, we have to learn to acknowledge God and let him direct us. He said, trust him. And how do we trust him? How do we show for that? We trust him to acknowledge him in everything. In everything, in all our ways, and to not to learn not to lean so much onto our own understanding, you know, um, 
we literally have to the word tells us to be transformed by the renewing of our minds so let's go to it um romans 12 and 2 it says and be not conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. How will you learn that? It's by a transformation happening in your mind. It says in 3, 4, I say through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think. But to think soberly, according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. So we ought to be sober minded through, you know, and um, and um, even think through that measure of faith that God has given us, you know. A lot of us are not being very sober minded. You know, we're not very humble, in other words. Instead, we're, we're tending to be high minded, okay? And God is bringing down everything that exalts itself against his knowledge. He's bringing down um, a lot of different things that... Uh, goes against who he is you know what I'm saying he's just he's just doing a new thing he's doing doing something that um, is is referencing him for who he is you know what I'm saying we're really going to tap in and know him like you're gonna know the difference between God and um, something that's not of God you know a lot of us don't have that discernment and so we tend to sway otherwise we kind of tend to go with the flow and God's wanting to take all those um, things that are have blinded us and allow us to see clearly his spirit versus the enemy you know because he mocks he mocks God he um, tries to portrayed to be his spirit but it's not you know and it takes God to to take the blinders off of our eyes so that we can see clearly as to who you know God is and so um I had mentioned earlier Isaiah 55 and it's verse 8 and nine and it says for my thoughts are not your thoughts neither are your ways my ways saith the lord for as the heavens are higher than the earth so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts note that you know Another one, well, you know, Colossians 3 and 2 says, set your affections on things above, not on things on the earth. You know, that's one way to um, kind of stop thinking um, in a, with a carnal mind. You know what I'm saying? You... You got to set your sights. People tend to just see what's here. And their mindset is based on the things that they see versus the things that the Holy Spirit is trying to reveal to us. And so we have to learn how to take up on what is God saying? What is his spirit trying to show us? You know, first Corinthians Set, uh, 2 and 16 says for who have known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him 
but we have the mind of Christ. And so the only way um, that we can actually think higher is by taking on the mind of Christ. And that's like um, so important. Um, if we go to f go to Philippians two and five, it says in five, verse five, "Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God." but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men and being found in fashion as a man he humbled himself and became obedient unto death even the death of the cross wherefore God hath God also have highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And so recognize um, John, St. John 14 and 26, it says, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost from the Father, f f I'm sorry, is the Holy Ghost whom the Father will send in my name. He shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. And so So let's let's go up a little bit. We're going to go to 16 and it said, and I will pray the father and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. Even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive. Because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him. For he dwell with you and shall be in you. He said, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Yet a little while and the world seeth me no more. But ye see me because I live, ye shall live also. At that day, ye shall know that I am in my father and in ye in me and I in you. He that hath uh, my commandments and keepeth them, he is that he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my father. And I will love him and will manifest myself to him. Judah saith unto him, not a scarlet. Lord, how is it that thou wilt manifest thyself unto us and not unto the world? And Jesus answered unto him. And uh, Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words. 
and my father will love him and we will come unto him and make our abode with him he said us we we are going to do it not just me but also the father with me we both are going to come into him we're going to make our abode with him and he that loveth me not keepeth not my sins and the world which ye hear is not mine but the father's which sent me this world ain't don't belong to me but it belongs to my father who sent me these things ha I have spoken unto you, being yet present with you. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost from the Father, will send in my name, whom the Father will send in my name. He shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let it be afraid. It says, ye have heard how I said unto you, I go away and come again unto you. If ye loved me, ye would rejoice. Because I said, I go unto the Father, for my Father is greater than I. And now I have told you it, I mean, I have told you before it come to pass that when it is come to pass, ye might believe. So I'm telling you before it comes to pass, so that when it does, you're going to believe what I'm talking about, what I've told you already. Hereafter, I will not talk much with you, for the prince of this world cometh and have nothing in me, but that the world may know that I love the Father, and as the Father gave me commandment, even so I do. Arise, let us go hence. So, like Christ knew to do the will and the work of the Father that the Father had given him. And so we have to learn to do the same. And he let you know that he couldn't tell you too much because the prince of the world was coming and had nothing in him. So they're, the, they're not the same, you know, and you have to recognize the difference. And that's what um, acknowledging him in all our ways, you know, and he's going to be the one to direct us to know the difference. Um, right now is the time to acknowledge who God is. Matthews 10 and 32 says, Whosoever therefore shall confess me before me and him will I confess also before my father, which is in heaven, which we practically just read, you know, that he said that he, they were going to come together and make their abode with us. You know what I'm saying? So, yes, he going to know who we are even before we go to heaven because he's already going to be abiding with us just like Jesus Christ. You know, so Luke 12 and 8 said, also, I say unto you, whosoever shall confess me before men, him shall the son of man also confess before the angels of God. So he said, not only am I going to. Um, confess you before my father but I'm also going to confess you before the angels of God Psalms 46 and 1 says God is our refuge and strength a very present help in trouble we have to recognize that God is there he is our refuge he is our strength and he is very present even in our time of trouble he is there Two says, therefore, will not we fear, though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, Salah, there is a river 
the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her and that right early the heathen raised the kingdoms were moved he uttered his voice the earth melted the lord of hosts is with us the god of jacob is our refuge salah come behold the works of the lord what desolations he hath made in the earth he maketh wars to cease unto the end of the earth he breaketh the bow and cutteth the spear in sonder he burneth the chariot in the fire be still and know that i am god i will be exalted among the heathen i will be exalted in the earth the lord of hosts is with us the god of jacob is our refuge know who god is acknowledge him in all of our ways be still and know that he is god he is exalting himself in this hour, even amongst the heathen. Okay. He said, I will be exalted in the earth. Psalms 114 and 7 says, Tremble thou earth at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the God of Jacob. Ain't that amazing? Even the earth trembles at the presence. So when the earth is trembling, that means one thing. God's presence is being made known. He is here. He is present. Help in our time of refuge. You know, he, he, he the word says he never leaves us nor forsakes us. We have to acknowledge him in all of our ways. Let's see. Um, Deuteronomy 31 and 6 said, Be strong and of a good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, he it is that doth go with thee. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Hebrews 13 and 5 says, Let your conversations be without covetousness, and be content with such things as ye have. For he hath said, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. Isn't that amazing? Like God acknowledge him he is our present help in our times of trouble you know he is our refuge he it he it is him that keeps us safe it's him you know that keeps it and keeps us and keeps our mind even even during the times of trouble even though you know we go through these things of life you know that some things are out of our control, you know, and we have to acknowledge God is always in control. Although we may not be in control, God is always in control. And the more we acknowledge him, the more he can lead you and guide you in all of our ways. He will direct your path, you know, but first we have to come into that knowledge acknowledgement and um, we need that understanding to know how is he communicating with us now you know what I'm saying and not be blindsided not uh, limit him as to how he communicates you know and being open and available knowing that he is present you know, he doesn't leave us. He doesn't forsake us. Let us be open as to how he wants to commune with us. You know, he lives, he abodes with us. Okay. 
know that the word of God says it. So it, it, if God's word says it, then it is true, you know, because it is his word. And I acknowledge him. I acknowledge his word. I acknowledge what he, not just what he has written, but also what he has spoken, you know, and, you know, his word speaks when God speaks his word, actually, you know, he actually speaks to us audibly as well. Like even in our hearts, sometimes it may not be in your ear, but sometimes he might say something in your heart. You know, because he's in us. The word said, greater is he that's in us than he that's of the world. So there's a difference there. And like I said, the more we acknowledge him, the better. You know, there's some things that are about to take place. And we have to be ready for what he's trying to show us. He's trying to show us the difference. You know, he's trying to... Um, show us the difference, you know, and some of us aren't going to like what we see and some of us aren't going to be open to receive the difference The, you know, we're not, some of us, it's going to, it's, I'm going to say it's going to be hard to actually see it for what it is. You know, sometimes the truth comes and, you know, we know the truth comes to set us free, but sometimes that truth comes and it's hard for us to reverence it, recognize it, and actually take it in. You know what I mean? And so um, we just, that's why we need that heart to be receptive to God's will and his ways. We need to be open to what God is doing, open to what he's showing us, know that and, you know, first and foremost, the enemy could use anyone. And not only that, but seeing and knowing his devices, he will, he's very cunning, you know, and he will orchestrate something that you, you can be 100 percent behind someone. Believing them to be uh, an angel of the Lord and find out this person ain't what I thought they were you know what I'm saying the enemy will expose himself (laughs) you know what I mean like and and if you continue to follow that then that's on you but if God opens your eyes to see it then you have to acknowledge that so that you can go on the path that he has set for you you know we are all journeying together you know our journeys may be different But we're all trying to get to the same place. Am I right? You know, we're all trying to, we're not trying to go to hell, right? You know, I would assume that we're trying to go to heaven. And um, the more we acknowledge God, the more that we lift him up, the more that we take upon the mind of Christ, the more that we acknowledge who he is and where he lives, you know, acknowledge everything in, in all our ways, you know, he will direct us. He will direct us in every area of our lives. So we have to be open to it. We have to be open to change. We have to be open to uh, his revelation. We have to be, we can't be opposed to the things of God, you know. Sometimes, you know, personally, I tend to not want to so much hear what everybody is saying because I want God to do and say to me what he wants to say. If he leaves me there, I'm fine with that because he let me just like um, I had spoke on how I was led to Jackie Fleming's um, uh, life. And, um, but God was saying something different, although it was on one accord with what she was saying, yet he said something totally different to me regarding this. And so, you know, as he leads me, I want to follow, you know, some people want to lead you, but it's not for them to lead you, you know what I'm saying? And, And I mean, that's, it's just not, you know, we ought to. 
um, be led by the Holy Spirit. If the Holy Spirit, you know, says, okay, go over here. Okay, listen to this. Okay, I done gave this person a word. I want you to hear it. You know, I, I tend to, I'm, I'm thankful for the podcast because I believe whosoever comes and listens that they'll take what God said. They'll take something from him, what he's saying, you know, to them. And he'll bring forth that awareness as to everything that he's doing and everything that he's done and everything that he's going to do. You know, he's he's bringing forth light. Okay. And so I just believe that. I believe it, you know, with all my heart. He's going to expose. He's going to show, you know, whatever it is that he's going to, you know, we just have to be open. You know, he's exposing and, you know, he already began exposing, you know, and it just seems like he's going from exposing to exposure. You know, it's like getting greater and greater, like even the more so and but he wants us to step into that discernment to know you know and that's like that's the only way for healing that's the only way for deliverance is exposure even in our own self even our, our own lives you know God will expose some things about us so that we can get things right with him and he also and he'll i mean he's just so awesome when he exposes something sometimes it's to take certain desires it's to take certain um thoughts you know what i'm saying it's to take certain things maybe you you uh, picked up a spirit off somebody and didn't even know it it's possible which is why we have to constantly be prayerful, be mindful, know when the enemy is at work, know what you're uh, going up against and stay in tune. <laughs> allow the Holy Ghost to manifest himself and allow the Holy Spirit to work in you and to show you things. And even he'll even show you some things to come, you know. Um, he'll show you the intentions of people's hearts. He'll show you. He'll manifest so much. You know, here a lot of people are trying to manifest things on their own, but God, it, He wants to do it. You know what I'm saying? And as we sit back and allow Him to, and stop trying to be um, play the God and allow God to be God. You know, that's where the enemy uh, brings forth his deception because of the fact that, um, you know, he wanted to be higher. He wanted God to basically bow down to him. And when we take things upon ourselves. It's like we're saying the same things. We're coming into agreement with the enemy. And God wants us to get in line and that's why he said to take up on the mind of Christ. So if, you know, he wanted us to go about our own way. And he, he just flat out exposed the fact that Christ was obedient. He did God's will. He wasn't trying to go about his own way and his own will. He didn't even judge with his own judgment. He did everything according to the Holy Spirit, to God's. It, what he was saying to him to, to, in order for him to do you know what I'm saying he would show him something and he would do it just as God showed him to do it and bam people would get healed bam people would be set free bam people would be delivered just like that and we have to learn how to be just like him obedient the word says obedient is greater than sacrifice so here it is we tend to Instead of obey, we trying to get God to obey us. Or we trying to, to lead God or lead the Holy Spirit. I mean, the Holy Spirit was brought and sent forth for us to be led by. You can't lead the Holy Spirit. You, 
you, you can lead your own spirit. You know, we already know that where that ends up in destruction. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We, because there's a way that seems right to you, and in the end, it leads to death. You know what I mean? So we don't want to go into that. You know, we want to be led by the Holy Ghost. And so I know personally I do. I don't know about everybody, but personally, yes, I do. And so we're going to end this with prayer. Lord God, we thank you, Lord, for your peace. We thank you for your love. We thank you, God, for your understanding, Lord God. We ask you for that heart of repentance. Help us, Lord God to um, acknowledge you Lord God forgive us for not acknowledging you in all of our ways and God we thank you Father that you are readily available to direct our paths God thank you Lord God for your peace thank you for the peace that you have left with us thank you for your love thank you for your kindness Lord God we thank you we acknowledge you in all in all of our ways Lord God and I thank you Lord God um for allowing us to see that we need to acknowledge you even the more so and to know what is and what isn't you you know to acknowledge you to the fact to have that relationship to know the difference and i thank you father for it i thank you lord god for provision i thank you lord god for setting us free from that mind of captivity lord god that you release God, oh, Father, that I say, in the mighty name of Jesus, open up our soul today. Open up our eyes, oh God. Open up our hearts, oh God. Open up every part, Lord God. Every day, I son that I have. Even out of the anointing. Ah, you that I have son that I have. God, open up our ears to hear, Lord God. Up in the anointing, oh God, even now, God, move in the mighty name of Jesus, God, and we thank you for what you're doing. We thank you, Father, for what you're going to do, and we thank you, Lord God, for everything that you've already done. We acknowledge you for everything that you've done already for us, and we give you all honor and all praise for it all belongs to you. And I just thought about that, um, man, to open up, um, in all of our ways, you know, and allowing God to truly direct us. And I was thinking about our relationship, you know, like a relationship. And um, I remember the Holy Spirit showed me that, um, you know, when people talk about you. And this is part of acknowledgement. When people talk about you as a person, you got people that know you. And if somebody says something about you. They'll know if that fits you or not. And, and if it's off, then you know something's wrong if it's true. Otherwise, you know they got that person mixed up, right? And the same thing with God. He wants us to know him like that. To where if somebody is speaking and if they're moving with a whole nother spirit, that we'll acknowledge that that is not of God. Mm-mm, that ain't him. Nope, that's mm-mm. Now, I'm not talking judgment, but I'm talking knowledge. I'm talking um, spiritual revelation. I'm talking um, just because of a relationship with him. Some of us don't have a relationship. So it's hard to distinguish what's of God and what isn't. This is why a lot of people get carried away um, with other doctrine, other doctrines. You know, um, unless God, unless God leads you to it, because He may be trying to show something through something else. You know, He's not limited like that. 
But what I'm saying is when it comes down to it, it's like certain things you just know ain't it. That ain't God. Mm-mm, no, uh-uh. I don't know what that is. You know, it, it can be somebody operating in another spirit and um, they start speaking in tongues or they start trying to lay hands and trying to knock you down. You know what I'm saying? Different things like that. And you're like, no, that ain't that ain't my God right there. Nope, he wouldn't do that. You know, and um, then you see those that um, don't know, like I said. And so they just, because they're thirsty, because they really want to know God, because they really want a personal relationship. You know, it's so easy when you, you're you starting off in this journey to be open to things and not know the difference between one versus the other. No, you know, the light and the dark can get mixed up when you're walking. You know what I'm saying? You And, and you don't know no better. You don't know the difference. You know what I'm saying? And so, I mean... It's like, God has to be the one to expose you to it and know that, okay, nope, that ain't, you see that right there? That's not a me. Yep, this right here, this is me. Or just spending that time with him long enough, you'll get to know him and you get to know the difference. You know what I mean? Um, It's just like, like I said, you haven't, like you can have a family member and you spend every day with that family family member. And then, like I said, somebody come and they say something about them that's negative or whatever. And, you know, maybe they got some negative ways. And if it sounds like something that they would do, you'd be like, yep, yeah, that's them. But if it doesn't, you'd be like, I don't know about that. And I don't think I'm, I'm going to have to go back and talk to her about that one same thing we need to do with God when we see stuff that don't fit the bill that don't sound like God that don't look like God we need to go back to him and say what is this of you is this what you said you know um some people be saying thus said the Lord God said and God didn't say that so We need to go back to him and say, Lord, is this what you said? Is this what you're trying to tell us? You know, and so anyways, um, I pray that this word um, was beneficial to you. I pray that you receive something out of it and that it's going to help you open up your eyes to see what God is doing. And so when it gets done, when you start seeing it take place. You know, it won't be shocking because he already spoke it. You know, he's already spoken it. So, you know, it's it's this is just preparation to know what he's about to do and to help you to be open to receive, to acknowledge, and to know. You know that uh, God is showing. He's he's exposing. You know, he's he's showing us who he is, and he's showing us. Who's not. And so until next time, God bless.